Have you or someone you know been diagnosed with a subcarionic hematoma or a subcarionic hemorrhage? I know it sounds alarming, but you're not alone. And in most cases, it's actually quite manageable. Today, I'll explain exactly what that is and why it happens and what it means for your pregnancy. So if you're feeling worried or uncertain, just stick around. I'm here to help answer all the questions and provide you all the reassurance that you need about this diagnosis. I'm Dr. Christina Pinnock, and I'm a board certified OBGYN and high-risk pregnancy doctor, passionate about helping you to have a healthy and enjoyable pregnancy. If you find my pregnancy tips helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also sign up to my free weekly newsletter at healthypregnancyafter30.com. You can find that link in the description box below as well. So let's dive in and learn more about a subchorionic hematoma and why in most cases, it's something that can be monitored safely. So let's start off by talking about what exactly is a subchorionic hematoma. So simply put, a subchorionic hematoma is actually a small area of bleeding that happens between the placenta and the wall of the uterus. This bleeding happens in a space called the subchorionic space, hence the name subchorionic hematoma. Some people can call it a subchorionic hemorrhage as well. Those things can be used interchangeably and mean the same thing. While the word can sound actually like a mouthful, it's actually one of the most common causes of bleeding early during pregnancy. In fact, we found that it can happen in about one to 3% of all pregnancies, and typically it's diagnosed on an ultrasound. So if you've been told that you have one, just know that you're not alone, and in most cases that it resolves on its own, and most women do okay in pregnancy with this diagnosis. Let's next jump into talking about what causes a subchorionic hematoma. And the truth is, we actually don't always know what the exact cause of a subchorionic hematoma is. It can happen simply due to the process of just that egg and sperm landing in the uterus and it just happens. Sometimes the tiny blood vessels around the placenta gets disrupted during that process and it can lead to that small bleeding in the subchorionic space and later we'll um, find the subchorionic hematoma. It's important to know that as a mom-to-be, a subchorionic hematoma is not caused by anything that you personally did, nor could it have been prevented. And so it's just important to know that it's something that spontaneously or randomly happens and it doesn't point to any bigger issues with your health or your baby or what you've done. So next we'll talk about the symptoms of a subchorionic hematoma. The main symptom is vaginal bleeding or even spotting and it can vary in intensity. Some women it may be just light spotting that goes away on its own within a day or two, but for other women it can actually cause heavier bleeding that could come and go. So it's important to know that not everyone with a subcarnic hemorrhage or subcarnic hematoma is going to have the same level of bleeding and some women may not even have any noticeable symptoms. In fact, a lot of the times subcarnic hematomas are only found by chance unlike a routine ultrasound when there's no signs or symptoms or any evidence of any bleeding from that mom in the pregnancy. If you're experiencing any bleeding during your pregnancy, it's always important to go ahead and reach out to your healthcare provider. And while bleeding can be from many causes in pregnancy, we always check to make sure that it's not a hematoma or some other reason and to just determine overall what's happening with the pregnancy so you can get the best care possible. Now let's talk about how this is usually diagnosed. Typically, a subcarinic hematoma is diagnosed with an ultrasound and the developing placenta. And we make sure that when we do pick up this hematoma that we track the size of it over time. And this is important because the size and the location of the hematoma can actually affect how we monitor the pregnancy. So once it's picked up on ultrasound, we'll keep a close eye on those various things to make sure that it's monitored appropriately. Now, in most cases, if the hematoma is small, it's more likely to resolve on its own, whereas larger hematomas may require more careful monitoring, but this doesn't necessarily mean that it will lead to any complications in the pregnancy. Now, one of the biggest questions that I get about subcarnic hematomas is whether they'll affect the baby. And, you know, this is a very, very understandable concern. And in summary, majority of the cases, a subcarnic hematoma does not impact your baby's health, does not impact your baby's development. And many times the body is just going to reabsorb that blood and then it'll go away naturally without causing any harm to your baby or your pregnancy. If the hematoma is really large or if it's there for a 
a long time, then there's a slight increased risk of having complications from it, like a miscarriage or going into labor early, especially if that hematoma causes the placenta to separate slightly from the wall of the uterus. I just want to emphasize that many women with a subcornic hematoma go on to have healthy, full-term pregnancies and that these risks are really limited to those hematomas that are extremely large that we're finding on ultrasound that are persisting or staying over time when we're monitoring them. Now, another common question I get is whether there is any treatment for a subcarnic hematoma. Now, in terms of treatment, there isn't any specific medication or intervention to cure the hematoma, but I do think there are a few things that you can keep in mind to just support your body and your pregnancy and to help to manage your symptoms if you have been diagnosed with a hematoma. And the first one of those is just think about the amount of rest you're getting and think about what kind of activities that you're doing. Now, your doctor may recommend doing less strenuous exercises or heavy lifting or even high impact exercises but rest doesn't necessarily speed up the healing but it can help you to avoid any extra strain on your body which can be beneficial if you're having any symptoms like heavy bleeding or cramping now to be clear this is not bed rest we do not recommend bed rest for pretty much any condition in pregnancy it's just a modification of your activities depending on your symptoms and how things are going now another thing that could help is staying hydrated. Staying well hydrated is always a good idea in pregnancy and that's because dehydration can actually worsen some cramping symptoms and so drinking plenty of water is a simple way to keep your body hydrated and in good balance especially if you're having any bleeding or cramping associated with the hematoma. Now the last thing I'd say that is helpful in terms of follow-up is monitoring the hematoma with ultrasounds. Most providers will schedule a follow-up ultrasound to monitor the size and to make sure that the progression of the hematoma is getting less and less. And then doing this will allow us to track any changes and be able to reassure you that things are progressing as we'd expect them to, even with this um, hematoma being present. As I mentioned before, in many of these cases, the hematoma is gonna shrink and eventually disappear as the pregnancy progresses. While subcarnic hematomas in pregnancy are generally very manageable, there are certain symptoms that you should be mindful of and let your OB doctor know right away if you're experiencing any of them. Now, these symptoms include heavy bleeding, severe belly pain or abdominal pain, dizziness, or any sort of new symptoms that concern you. I just always like to remind you that your OB provider is there to support you and help you understand what's happening with your pregnancy and your body. So if you're ever concerned, then always reach out about that. I know that a subcarnic hematoma can can bring up a lot of anxiety and fear if it's diagnosed on ultrasound and it's very natural to worry about your pregnancy especially if you know it's a finding that sounds concerning but I'd say one of the best things that you can do is to just lean on your support system if you know you are worried or anxious after finding out about this so talk with your partner your friends family or you may even want to connect with other moms who've had similar experiences in pregnancy that can give you just their personal um, anecdotes and share their experience with you. And I've said this before, but many women go on to have healthy pregnancies after being diagnosed with a subcarnic hematoma. So I think it's important to just keep that in mind and take it one day at a time and focus on the things that you're able to control like following your doctor's guidance and just taking care of yourself with doing the small things. But I totally understand that this can be a very unsettling and anxiety provoking diagnosis. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this video has helped to answer some of your questions about the subcarnic hematoma and brought you a little bit of peace of mind as you're navigating this diagnosis. If you found this information helpful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new videos and pregnancy tips. If you are enjoying these pregnancy tips, go ahead and check out my weekly newsletter at healthypregnancyafter30.com or you can find the link in the description box below. As always, any questions or comments, you can leave them below. I'm happy to hear from you and I'll see you on the next video.